So Nadine prefaced a little bit of um, Emeritus Professor Alan Pettigrew's next presentation. Um, he will be presenting an analysis of sector data, and it's an analysis that I found absolutely fascinating, um, and I hope you'll enjoy it too. Alan has held senior academic executive appointments at the universities of Sydney, Queensland and New South Wales, as well as vice chancellor at the University of New England. In 2019, he commenced a term as fellow of Senate and pro-chancellor at the University of Sydney. He is chair of the Senate's People and Culture Committee and a member of the Risk and Audit and Nominations Committees. Welcome, Alan. Thank you very much, Verity, for the welcome and it's great to be here, actually. I'm not an expert in equity, so I'm learning heaps this afternoon. So thank you to Nadine. Wonderful talk. Really lots to think about out of what you've done and what you said this afternoon. So thank you. Before I go any further, I also would like to acknowledge the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation on whose lands we're meeting today and whose lands the University of Sydney is on and where my home is. So I'm very much in the Gadigal mould, as it were. What I wanted to talk to you about today is an analysis of the data which is held by the Federal Department in Canberra. It's from what Nadine said, it's only one of several data sources, but it's the one that I've gone to in order to understand the shape of, of, of the sector and how performance is going in the sector at the present time and over and some years previous to the present time to see what changes have been there. The data that I've sourced is highlighted on the slide. You can all go to that. It contains all your data. So you can investigate this in the way that I've investigated it. There's no, nothing that I've done that you can't also do. Just to reveal what the data says, this is the table of table 16 the institutional student equity performance data goes from 2009 to 2021. My estimate is that there's 90,000 data points or more in that little Excel spreadsheet. I'm not going to talk about 90,000 data points this afternoon, but I'll bring some of it together so that it becomes a little more understandable as what the sector, how the sector is going at the moment. What I want to talk about are the major, major groups, the major equity groups. And I'm going to talk about participation numbers from the, over that 10 year period, participation numbers by university and by university groups. And I'll show you my grouping in a moment in 2021. And you can see the other things which I'm going to go through. I've been given 20 minutes to go through 90,000 data points. So. It's going to be a bit of a rush job, but I hope it gives you a picture of what the university sector looks like. I'll summarise at the end with the big picture stuff um, about the sector. So these are national equity student numbers. So this is the, the population of the equity groups in Australia over the last period, 10 years. And you can see the regional at the top, and that number of students has grown by 16% over the 10 years. Low SES, grown by 43% over the 10 years. Disability, up 164% with a rapid rise in the most recent years. This is in contrast to the, all the other coloured lines there, which are relatively flat over the last five years, bringing into frame what was the caps going back on the system, et cetera. Um, and you can see the other ones there. Indigenous has doubled over that period, 99% growth, but remote is only up 20%. So national figures, that's what everybody's playing with at the moment in the national scene. If I then look at participation, uh, this is comparing, or I should have also pointed out on the previous slide that the total domestic growth grew by 31% compared to those other percentages. This is participation, so this is the group percentage of total student numbers. And so you can see regional numbers appear to have fallen uh, by 2.3% over the 10 years. They certainly haven't grown in that sense. Uh, low SES is flat, disability has grown by 4.9%. And you can see the other numbers there. Um, what you have to understand when you're looking at this number is that there are two variables here. One is the number of people number of students in those equity groups, but there's also the number of students who are not in those equity groups. 
and they have gone up. So the reason why regional has fallen backwards a bit could be because there are fewer regional students participating. It could be because non-regional students are increased, non-equity group students are increased, or both. And we just don't know. But there is evidence that I've seen from a couple of individual universities where the number of regional students has not declined. It has actually grown a bit, but their non-equity group student load has gone up. And I think that is related in part, potentially, to regional campuses opening city-based campuses to pick up students from a different cohort. So that's something that we need to look at down the track, I think. Now, I've been looking at these sort of data for the last 10 years or so, and my original interest was in, in terms of research. What's the research profile of Australian universities? I've since expanded that analysis into what's the distribution of student load across Australian universities and what's the distribution of staff of three different categories, teaching only, research only, and teaching and research staff. All that data is shown on this slide. When you look at the data from several spreadsheets and put them all together, as I've done here, you find that the institutions on the original data are listed alphabetically. It's hard to pick a picture out of the alphabetical listing of, of Australia's universities. And just a trick, if you want to get into this game, be very, very careful because universities change their name from time to time. Not only that, sometimes universities are listed with the university of something or just university of something. And that affects their position. So you see data wobbling around a bit if you miss out on that, that particular point. These data, the orange bars on the left graph are research block grant, percentage share of total research block grant. The blue bars on the same are percentage share of total EFSL. On the right is percentage share of staff. And what you see in, when you look at, if you take your glasses off and just look at the shape of the graph, what you can see here is that there are large institutions at the top with a lot of research going on, the G08. There's a middle group of universities where there's a balance, more of a balance between student load and research activity. And then there's the lower group of universities where there's a lot of teaching going on, relatively a lot of teaching going on, but not a lot, not as much research. So what I've done in all the analyses I've done, as I say, over the last 10 years is divide these areas into three groups. There's the G08 at the top. I then go to G9 to 20. And 20 seems to hover around halfway through the sector. So I go G21 to the bottom. I don't mean the bottom. I mean the lowest. I mean, you know what I mean. <laughs> so that's my grouping. There, is a, there are different ways of grouping this, but I've done it for everything else that I've looked at in terms of staff, research, student loads, etc. So for today's purposes, I hope you'll bear with me and I'll stick with that, that grouping because it shows you the shape and the profile of Australia's higher education sector at the moment. Equity participation numbers. These are the numbers of student per university. And you can see that the bars tend to get longer as you go down. Right? Now, the four colours are the four major groups. Low SES, regional remote, disability and Indigenous. It's the smallest one shown in green there. So that's the distribution of numbers. And you can see the actual total numbers per university there on the bottom of the scale, it goes up to 30,000 numbers. If I then break that out to show you the distribution across the different categories, you can see that the pattern is slightly different if you go across the four different categories here. So low SES on the left, there's a lot of low SES going on in the lower part of the distribution, particularly also for regional and remote. And there are a couple of universities that are very, very big on regional and remote, and you'll see those in a moment. Disability is a slightly different pattern. There's a lot of the disability is being picked up in the institutions in the top half of the graph compared to the lower part of the graph. And then Indigenous. It's interesting to me that apart from the top eight universities, the GO8, 
Indigenous seems to be fairly strong and more evenly spread, if you like, across the university sector. I just wanted to point out to you the scale of these graphs. And if you look at the scale of the graphs, the smallest one is the zero to 4,000 on the right, which is our Indigenous load across the country. It is very, very low, extremely low. Now, if I avoid my original ranking system and now rank each of those four major categories by the proportion of the national total, so each university then is expressed as a percentage of their total, you can see them lined up rather differently. So ranked on low SES, UWS, sorry, Western Sydney University, Showing my, I'm showing my age now and my apologies to Barney, where it is watching in from. You can see them listed there uh, and the same, the pattern is different across the graph. Ranked on re regional and remote, you can see a different set of universities. A few of them pop up across at least three of those. And one or two pop up on one, namely the University of Sydney and the University of Melbourne. Uh, in terms of disability. So these universities account for 50% of all the students in each of the equity group. And Verity in her introduction pointed out she'd used a figure of 60%. I thought it was okay to go to 50%. It's only 10% lower, but it highlights the issue. 12 of 42 account for the first 50% of low SES enrolments. Ranked on R and R, eight of forty-two universities are picking up the bulk of the, of the, or at least the first fifty percent. So you can see that. And the other thing I've done here is highlight with bold and grey those universities who carry less than three percent of the national student load. And you can see where the distributions are, particularly for Indigenous, and particularly for rural, uh, regional, and remote. Okay, so they're all concentrated in, or they're largely concentrated in a few universities. Now, I need to explain this sort of illustration, which is common or garden Excel spreadsheet use of numbers. The little key for how this works is on the bottom right hand side there. So you can see what I've, each dot on that little thing at the bottom right hand side there, each dot is the score for a university in a year. So the series of dots there account for all the universities within that year. The box part of it is accounts for the middle 50%. So the bottom of the box accounts for the first quartile. So anything outside that box on the lower side would be in the first quartile. And similarly above the box is in the last quartile. And then the, the what they call the whiskers, this is a box and whiskers plot. So the, the whiskers actually show you what is 1.5 times the interquartile range above and below. So the whiskers should contain most of the universities, but they don't, it doesn't contain all of them because this is a statistical analysis. And occasionally there'll be a dot outside the whiskers, both above or below. And so the dot is labelled as an outlier. The dot, any dot outside the whiskers is an outlier. And on the top panel there, you can see all on the same scale of percentage from zero to 100, where the low SES numbers are in 2011 and 2021. And you can see there's an outlier there up near 40% in 2011, but it's not there in 2021. On the right hand side, you can see two outliers in the regional, but you can see the box is wider. So there's a wider distribution across the universities in that for that year. And it's slightly lower uh, for 2021, but there are four outliers there. I'll come back to those in a moment. You can see relatively speaking, how few remote students there are and how few Indigenous students there are, and disability up around now, up around the 10% mark, which you saw from the first slide. But you can see this, the relative spread across the institutions of the Australian higher education sector, uh, particularly for regional 
and remote students are very widespread. So let's get into that in a little more detail. Oh, for those of you who wanted to know where you were, if you're an outlier, there's the information. So if you just look at the codes for the different universities, you'll find that the ones that I mentioned in bold and gray on the previous slide pop up on this particular slide as well. CQU, JCU, et cetera, UTAS and Federation University, for example. So if we then go to look at these across the three groups of universities that I illustrated before, for low SES, you can see the G08 panels, you can see the G9 to 20 panels, and you can see the G21 to 40 panels. I've excluded Torrens and Bachelor. So it comes back from 42 to 40. The reason for that is the numbers are very, very low at those two institutions. So there are a few outliers there, uh, particularly on the right, but you can see for low SES, the numbers as you go from left to right across the groups of universities there are much bigger, much wider spread for low SES amongst the smaller universities in the bottom half of my ranking scale. University of Adelaide is an outlier on low SES for the G08, uh, and CQU is the outlier on the top up there uh, for the 21 to 40 group, Central Queensland University. If I go to regional and remote, you can see the, the low numbers, relatively low numbers amongst the G08, and it's a very tight group, not much spread. The spread increases as you go to the G9 to 20, going up the graph a little bit, and then you can see the enormous spread for regionals uh, in the lower group of universities here. A similar picture for remote, but the numbers are very much smaller, uh, and the spread is greater, and you can see a couple of remote universities, sorry, a couple of universities with a high remote population uh, are coded there as outliers. So for regionals, UTAS is the big one here in that group, and CDU and CDU on the right-hand side there. Charles Darwin University, perhaps not unsurprising. If we go to disability, you can see that between 2011 and 2021, the numbers have gone up, which goes with the graph you saw, a rapid rise towards the end of the picture. Uh, and you can see the spread of universities there. There's a difference in scale here. This is only going up to 20% at the top. So um, that's, I've done that so you can see the expansion of the data. And then for Indigenous at the bottom, you can see that there's been quite a lot of movement in the Indigenous equity space between 2011 and 2021. Um, looking at the spread uh, in 2021 for the lower group, uh, quite a large distribution. CDU figures there. Uh, and now let's go on and I'll recombine all of that to make the national data to speed this up a little bit. But what I've now done is show the same style of analysis for retention rate. So this is a potential 100% score. And you can see the distribution there. It, it's hovering around 80% for low SES and regionals, drops down to about 75% for remote, but you can see the spread. Uh, likewise, disability around 80% and then in the mid 70s for indigenous. That's retention rate. If I look at retention ratio, which is comparing the equity group to the retention rate of all other students at those universities, then you can see retention rate for low SES and regional is looking pretty good. It drops back a bit for remote and you can see the spread down in this case. So there's, it's not quite so, some universities are not quite so successful. Uh, but on the other hand, there's a university there which gets up to 1.2. So it's rem their remote students are doing much better than their normal students. Interesting. One would ask a question, what are the support structures which help those students in that environment? Disability, you can see the, the links there and Indigenous on the right, dropping back to 0.9 uh, in a ratio. Uh, for success rate, um, you can see the pattern of distribution there. It's not changed very much across the two years. Uh, sorry, the two shown years, 2011, 2021. 
uh, but very, very wide distribution of outcomes for Indigenous students and, and also somewhat for disability, but certainly for Indigenous students. I was looking at this success ratio, which is the success of the equity group students uh, as a proportion of the success of other students. And as you can see, a very tight and a tight relationship for low SES and regionals, quite close to one. And in the case of the regionals, in excess of one, which means they're doing better than other students. Um, remotes and then disability and then indigenous falls away, as, as you can see there on the graph. But a very wide distribution amongst the indigenous with a couple of outliers there. Uh, so I think there's, well, that was in 2011. Things have improved somewhat for 2021, uh, but nevertheless, uh, quite a spread there of achievement amongst our indigenous colleagues. Okay, summary. Over the last 10 years, growth in national numbers, as you can see there, low SES, disability, indigenous have grown more than domestic students' growth. Regional and remote, fallen backwards a little bit, um, but nevertheless, that's the observation. National base equity group participation is highest for low SES and regional students and very low for remote disability and indigenous groups. Considerable variation across the university sector in participation rates for equity groups and it's heavily weighted towards smaller institutions with lower overall student load, smaller staff numbers and lower research activity. And this is the crunch point in my view. Um, it's all related to all sorts of interplaying factors such as geography, socioeconomic distributions, et cetera, uh, all plays into this space. But they, and also the tendency for students not to want to move, <laughs> local area stuff. So I think that's a big issue for equity practitioners and I know you'll probably get on to discuss all of that. Retention rates for equity students are variable across universities for all of the groups. They're not the same in every institution and they're quite variable. Retention ratios indicate that low SES regional and disability groups are comparable to other students and remote and indigenous groups are slightly lower than for other students. And success ratios, as you can see, their lower SES and regional groups show little variation. That is, they're quite tight and are comparable to, comparable to or better than those of other students. And remote disability indigenous groups show wider, wider variations across universities and progressively lower success ratios. So they're the sort of very, very high level conclusions that I drew out of the data. There's a lot more fine detail that we should investigate and should look at, but getting to the data, at least I found getting to the data was quite difficult. Um, I'm also concerned about some of the reliability of data reporting, but it's not only in this area, it's also in the research area, the staffing area and so on and so forth. So I think I've already mentioned this to Mary, I think we've got to look into the quality of data which is held by the department in which underpins all of these analyses. So, that's my presentation. Thank you for your attention.